This is the Mind and Body Podcast. We share extraordinary stories from people like you and me and the way they transform their lives. Welcome everybody. Welcome to the Mind and Body Podcast. And this episode is going to be quite amazing as I have an amazing, amazing lady right here with me. Her name is Rachel St. Forrest. She's from Florida. She had an amazing journey that she lost more than 100 pounds, like 140, I think. Her highest weight was 291. Her current weight is 167. She runs 6 to 12 miles every day. I can barely run one mile, so just understand what a monster she is. And one and best and not least, she has an incredible voice. She's an amazing singer, singer. And you need to follow her on Instagram. She will tell you later the, the, the username. And that's all. Let's, let's just meet her and let's get as much information as we can. So how are you, Rajan? Nice to meet you and great talking to you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'll just start and cut into the chase because people really want to know more about you and about your story and how you started. So just give me, tell me a bit about yourself. Okay. Um, well, I've struggled with weight all of my life. Uh, my highest weight was 291 pounds. And, you know, when you go through life, you, you just find your why. Like I always like to say I found my why and, um, you know, uh, had to vow to never stop fighting for it. So my main reason on losing the weight was my daughter. Uh, you know, I just recall the days where I couldn't play with her because I was overweight. And the last straw was when she told me that one of her classmates called me fat. And, you know, at that time I, mm-hmm. I saw how she felt. And, you know, as a parent, you're the role model for your child. And I wanted to show her that not only your friend wouldn't call your mom fat, but, you know, what it means to have a healthy lifestyle. And, um, you know, I'm a singer and I was denied so many record deals and or opportunities yeah. in the music industry because of my weight. You know, they're all about image. And, you know, I have lymphedema and that's when I have swelling in my legs and feet from like salt intake. So I noticed the more water I would drink and the more walking or exercise I did, it kind of went away. So the more I did that, it eliminated that. So that was even more of a push because, you know, as a young woman, you want to wear your high heels. And I was stuck wearing boots because of the swelling. So it was just a lot of reasons. And um, I'm just so happy that I decided to finally fight for me and, you know, just continue to to keep going on my journey. Because, you know, your mind becomes complacent and comfortable when you get you know, to your goal. So I just have to continuously set new goals for myself. And, you know, I'm just happy that I'm strong enough to continue to do that. Yeah. And, and just wondering, before you had the, that last straw with what uh, annoying kids did to your, to your daughter, did you, have fail, did you have failures until that final change that you, you did? Did, have, you did I have failures prior to that? Yeah. Other diets that you tried, supplements, and I don't know all of those tricks that we have in the industry. Yeah, I never try um, supplements. Of course, you try to like, you look online for like the little uh, three-day diets, you know, to get a push. (laughs) And, you know, everyone knows when you you do something overnight, it comes back overnight. So um, it definitely wasn't my first time trying to lose weight. But this time, you know, I asked myself, you know, of the times that I did lose a few pounds, you know, why was I never successful? And it only concluded to one thing, and that's because I kept quitting. So this time around, no matter how many times I messed up, if I eat the wrong meal, if I skip an exercise, if I become, you know, uh, not motivated for the day or so, I just vow to never quit. And I just always remind myself that tomorrow is a new day to be greater than yesterday. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I remember when I, when I, well, now I'm quite good, but when I, had my failures along the way, so mostly I just surrendered and went to to look at Netflix or, yeah. and, you know, the, the original stuff that you just don't have the energy because you don't want to go and run, you don't want to wake up in the morning and all of those things. Right. Uh, so tell me about, about your workout routine, except of the running, do you do anything else? Even though I want to know about your 6 to 12 miles a day that you're doing. <laughs> 
Um, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, I do some weight training because, you know, um, a woman's worst fear is to have loose skin or any person's worst fear is to have loose skin after losing such, um, you know, dramatic weight loss. And um, I do, you know, do some weight training, but mostly on my journey, I did strictly cardio because of, you know, I wanted the fat to be gone. You know, um, I would advise, though, uh, people who are afraid of loose skin or who have more or less elasticity I'm rather um, to include weight training because, you know, that helps you to firm your body and tone your body in the process. You know, you get in basically two for one. You know, um, mm. I didn't have as much loose skin. You know, it's all about your body type and my body type. Even when I was big, I didn't have like a lot of skin. So I knew I really wouldn't, you know, face that problem. However, it's always good to include some weight training as well. Definitely. Nice, nice. And some small question and diet. What are you really eating in the morning, at lunch, evening? In the mornings, you know, I like to do smoothies or egg whites. I really love egg white, egg whites and um, egg whites? avocado. Uh huh. Eggs, yeah, egg, like a um, omelet. Yeah. Made out of egg whites, you know, and um, avocado. And you know, sometimes I do like a coffee if I want one. You know, I definitely try not to deprive myself. And um, I'll do like a smoothie. Sometimes I'll use like the um, almond milk and just add, you know, whatever you want to add in it, like spinach, strawberries, bananas. Um, and I grind like my oatmeal and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just really what you like. Um, but I, I really like to do that. And um, sometimes I save half of that shake for lunch, you know, if I choose not to, if I'm not as hungry um, then, you know, but I do like mm -hmm. chicken breast. fish um sometimes i go to subway and get their chicken teriyaki uh you know for dinner <laughs> i might do chicken breast again or some fish and broccoli um but definitely i had to do like a 360 you know because i was eating like the fried chickens and the fast food so i had yeah. to eliminate that and my main addiction was soda um so i had mm. to like li eliminate the, the sodas and um i started implementing like the akin shakes as well Um, they're really good as well. When I felt like I wanted like a, when I had like a sweet tooth. So, um, it's a company called Atkins. I really like their shakes. At Atkins shake? Yes. Uh-huh. Cool. Cool. I'll, I'll look it up later. Yeah. And <laughs> one thing that I noticed that you didn't mention at all, uh, vegetables. Do you, do you eat them or not at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to eat your veggies and your fruits. Yeah. Um, I like broccoli, mm. asparagus, you know. Um, but definitely I include it and I try to include it at least, with, you know, a dinner every day. Um, but I love to put like kale in my shakes, you know, so yeah, I, kale yes, is good, do. yeah. <laughs> and don't forget your water. You have to drink your water. I would drink like eight um, bottles a day. So water nah. is very so imperative. We are the same. I drink like four liters a day. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. What is important. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And Just a minute, did you try to drink uh, apple vinegar and lemon juice in the morning? All of those tricks that you see in the winter? I before. tried that. You know, YouTube you like has it? all this stuff. And I tried <laughs> to do the vinegar. I lasted like a week. You know, it's so disgusting. Um, yeah. And, you know, they say it helped with the belly fat. But my thing is, I was doing everything as far as, like, the exercising and eating right. So I was like, is it really the vinegar or is it my work ethic? So I really couldn't, you know... figure out what was working as far as like the vinegar. So I just quit doing it. But, you know, I do hear a lot of good reviews about it. So it's really up to, you know, the person on their journey. Yeah, cool, cool. Nice. So let's, let's think about, about you. Just, just tell me what keeps motivating you? How do you keep grinding and pushing, even though you really want to sit down, eat a cake, eat chocolate, <laughs> go to McDonald's, right, right. you know, all the, the nice things that we did before. What right. keeps you motivated and how you still keep pushing for? Um, the love for me. I literally, um, I, I, I love to say, you know, I fell out of love with food to fall in love with me. You really have to learn to love yourself and understand that you're worth fighting for. You know, um, just seeing the results. And again, it's not about the number on the scale. I, I love to glorify that. Like, oh, my God, look how much <laughs> weight I lost. But it's not really about that. It's about the non-scale victories. It's about living a healthy lifestyle, you know, doing things that I couldn't do as small as crossing my legs, you know, or playing with my daughter. It's about those things, you know, just knowing that you're doing what's best for your life and your family. Because if you're not good, no one else around you is good. Um, but definitely just 
like I carry around like an old picture of myself. And when I want to give up or feel like I want to mess up, I just look at it and you really have to ask yourself, is it really worth losing all of the work you put in? You know what I'm saying? And, and I just always tell myself I'm human. I'm going to cheat some days. I'm going to eat a cupcake, you know, but we're human. No one said you can never have those things. You just have to learn to eat that in moderation. We will get to the cheat days soon. Yeah. I have a question about it soon. Okay. One thing that I know that interests me is uh, your singing career. How did it change yeah. with your amazing transformation? I'm definitely closer than I was. You know, um, I'm getting, you know, some contacts from that, you know, especially the big hype, you know, in the uh, cover of the magazine. Um, but definitely a different response this time. You know, I'm happy that they're happy with what they see because back then it was a different story. <laughs> you know, they always scream out image, 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 which is, you know, I understand. But, you know. It's not always good when you're the person on the other end hearing that. So um, yeah. definitely moving along, and I'm just being patient and looking forward to what's to come. Nice, nice. That's, that's an amazing story. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think we covered uh, quite about you. And just I want to do a, a quick final round of quick questions to, to finalize and really squeeze the lemon out of you. Okay. So... Give me just several false beliefs that you had before that you can share and really break them apart to our listeners. You said some beliefs that I had before? Yeah, false beliefs. Things that you thought that that are true but are really not true. Oh, about weight loss? Yeah. Anything okay. you like. Anything? Um, you know, okay, the main thing is Once you're on a weight loss journey, you can't eat bad food, you know, quote, you know, bad food. Um, I learned that that's a lie. You know, I still, you know, not often, but, you know, I, I'll go out to dinner and have a steak. You know, again, it's about moderation and, yeah. you know, just knowing that tomorrow you're going to go work it off. You know, that's why you work hard to live, you know, and, and enjoy um, life. Um, so that's like the main thing. Like, it's crazy if they see me. You know, out to eat, it's like, oh, my God, Miss 100 pounds, you're out here eating. Uh, I'm human. I have a mouth. I still need to eat, you know, and I'm enjoying time with my family. So that's one thing. Um, something else is that it's impossible. A lot of people really think that weight loss is impossible. Um, I really don't think so. And I never understood when others would say, if I can do it, you can do it. I'm like, oh, they're just saying that. No, when I say if I can do it, you can do it, I truly mean that. Like, I was someone who would eat fried chicken for breakfast, and everybody was like, what do you mean by that? What I mean is whatever I didn't eat the night prior would be my breakfast. So if I went out to dinner and I had steak and I didn't finish my steak and potatoes, I was eating that at 7 in the morning, which is disgusting. You know, so if I could break those habits and, you know, eliminate all of those type of foods for the most part, You definitely can do it. It's really all in your mind. And the best advice I can give it is to get your mind right before going into something like this. Yeah. Because these quick fixes, like people, you know, no offense to anyone who has surgery. I'm not against surgery. I just always ask, number one, primarily, yeah. did you fight? You know, you have to try first. And then secondly, did you get your mind right? Because they go have the surgery but still fall in love with or still in love with pizza. You can't go get your stomach cut off or whatever you do and still eat two boxes of pizza a day. It's going to come right back. That's so why we're called say, mind and body, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. It's all in your mind. So it, I believe right now, if I want to be the president of the United States, I believe that I could possibly do that. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it's just what you put in. It's all about what you put in. So um, definitely just trusting yourself and, and trusting your journey not comparing yourself to others. I think that's a big one. You know, they get discouraged. Oh, you lost 100 pounds, but that was for me. Yeah. You only want to lose 20. You know what I'm saying? So stick to your 20 and do what you have to do. And you could take advice from me, but you, my journey is my journey. It's, you're not supposed to be aligned with exactly everything I do. So it, it's just yeah. learning that what's for you is for you, and it's definitely possible. You just have to stick it through. And that, that's yeah. really my main thing is just yeah. never giving up. It's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wish whoever can see the video, look at the big smile that she has. <laughs> that, that's all for the podcast. So you need to, to come and see it on YouTube as well. 
<laughs> okay, as and and as we talked about uh, steak in the evening and this now your cheat day. Do you have a specific day? Like I I have Saturday every week I do one cheat day. Mm-hmm. So do you have something specific or only in I don't I don't really have a specific day. Um, and I don't really like to say I have a cheat day. I call it more so like a cheat meal because a day of cheating could really like tear you up. Right. Um, but, uh, usually my Friday evenings are my evenings that are for me. Like I relax, go hang out with a friend, you know, um, but I really don't like to lock in that day because, Hey, your sister may call and say this Wednesday, can we go out to eat? You know? So I really just take it day by day, but um, definitely don't deprive yourself. If you feel like you want to have a cheat day, go for it. You work hard for it. And, you know, again, tomorrow's a new day to work that off. So definitely. Nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you. And tell me about your daily routine, morning routine. What, what, how is your day built up? Except of the things that I already said, like shakes, running. Do you have any specific things that you're doing? Um, in the morning, I typically get up about 4 a.m., get to the gym about 5. Yeah. Yeah. A monster. You're a monster. <laughs> an animal. You're simply an animal. Yeah, I get up at 5, and um, I go to my workout, and then I come back. Luckily, it's the summertime, but usually it would be school. You know, I have to get my daughter ready for school. And then, you know, I do my daily um, activities, whether it's working or in the studio, doing interviews, and then I go back for my evening jog or, you know, now I'm in the gym now. Um, so I do like the treadmill and, um, you know, just get ready for the next day. And that's really my schedule. But um, I'm looking to kind of like minimize my exercise again because I want to focus focus more on less cardio and more weight training. So I'm really wanting to set a goal to like gain some muscles and, you know, set that new journey up. So I'm really interested and excited about that. And when do you go to sleep if you wake up at 4 a.m.? Oh, I go to I try to go to sleep between like nine and ten, ten no later than eleven. Um, that's something that's you know now that I'm setting this new journey, that's a goal of mine to go back to the eight hours because sleep is so imperative. Sleep is important. So um, on this new journey, I want to start working out around like six thirty seven, and that'll buy me like two more hours because you know like when I was on my journey, I would sleep at like eight p.m. It was hard, but it was just like, I would get off work like at five, run, you know, come home, shower, get my daughter situated and go to bed. But now, you know, it's harder now because I'm doing interviews, replying to emails, so I'm up later. Um, But I'm definitely gearing back to get those eight hours because it's very, very important. Like the nights that I didn't get sleep, I didn't get results the next day. It's that serious. Yeah, I totally agree. And (laughs) last thing, and maybe Uh it could be the important, the most important one. A single tip that you want to pass on from all of, all of this interview? A single tip? Really just knowing you're worth fighting for. No, like, no one owes you anything in life, right? We, we tend to feel like the world owes us. No one owes us, but you owe yourself everything, right? And I just love mm-hmm. to tell people that. You know, fight for you because no one is going to fight for you like you will fight for you. And that's yeah. really my biggest advice to others. Yeah. yeah. World, world. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank Rachel, you. it was truly amazing talking to you. Thank I you. I wanted to ask you to sing, but it it will probably won't sound now sound good. And you're in the gym, so mm-hmm. not sure if that's a, would be a good idea. But anyway, I want to everyone to go and follow you. So if you can share your Instagram account, Facebook, whatever you have. Okay. Uh, my Instagram is uh, Miss 100 Pounds. That's M S 100 L B S, and that's also the same name for Facebook. M S 100 L B S, and my music page on Instagram is um, you can put Rachel Saint Fort Music. That's my name R A C H E L S A I N T F O R T Music. My artist name is Rochelle, R-A apostrophe, C-H-E-L, same as Facebook. So I look forward to the new followers and, you know, look forward to continue with my grind and my journey. And I thank you so much for the opportunity. Sure, sure. And everything, all the usernames will be in the footnotes, so don't worry. 
and you need to go and follow her. She is an amazing lady. And I want to start doing what she is doing. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. You are listening to the Mind and Body Podcast. We inspire people to take their lives to the next step by showing the successful journey from people like you and me.